Kia ora. Hello. This week we are going to take a break from some intense history to look at the medieval militia. That's right, it is about time we started to talk about the militia. We're going to focus on the urban militia instead of the levied soldiery drawn in at times of war, also referred to as the militia. We're going to give an overview of who this militia were, how they were organized, how they were armed, and more importantly, their connection with the middle class and the guilds. I'm Andrew, and this is Popular Urbanum, a channel where we discuss reenactment and the medieval middle class. It has often been asserted that the urban militias were unable to defend themselves or were unskilled. Its members only outfitted in the most minimal equipment and required to rely on mercenaries for protection. To this I say rot, tosh and poppycock. But before I dissect why the urban militia is not just some dudes in male shirts and cattle hats, we first need to understand what I'm talking about. One of the issues when addressing the militia is that this term is used very loosely in relation to the medieval period, be it the levied urban rural infantry, the paid and organized infantry, or urban civil defense. The militias were not a standing army. It is better to think of them as more of a homogenous reservist force that acted as town guard, army, and kind of like a police force. To better understand the militias, we need to better understand the cities. The cities were divided up into districts, be they called wards, parishes, quarters, and so forth. These were for administration and civil defence purposes. Each of these had their own assembly that acted independently of the local government. There was a local loyalty and identity for their citizens for each of these districts. These districts would be overseen by a local authority, usually an alderman or quartermaster. The local citizens would swear loyalty to this functionary. This functionary would then be responsible for arranging many administrative functions, including the defense and policing of these districts. Under them, they would usually have subordinates, such as a constable and sergeant and beadle and other people reporting to them. These aldermen also had local militias reporting to them. This militia was usually made up of the local guilds. Those not in the guilds included the rich, who were also required to serve. All male members from journeymen to masters from the ages of 16 to 60 were obliged to bear arms according to their means. This resulted in the more wealthy citizens bearing more elaborate equipment for themselves as the cities did not tend to provide weapons except for specialists, such as archers or gunners. More on that later. The future Pope Pius II wrote in 1444 about the German cities. Not only every noble, but even every burgher in the guilds had an armory in his house to appear equipped at every alarm. The skill of the citizens in the use of weapons is extraordinary. As it is mandatory for each member of the militia to arm themselves according to their means, the quality and type of gear would differ for each member. Muster rolls show a varied account of arms, from fully armed and armoured men to those with little more than a staff and dagger. Armour rolls in the Swiss cantons appear to demonstrate the most common form of armour was some form of body armour, be it male and a leather cuirassier, a long leather jacket, or just a cuirassier as a minimum. The next most recorded item to own was arm and hand protection. Beside defence of the city, the militia was responsible for the night watch, an especially important task. Members would walk the streets at night to ensure that there were no fires and kept the peace. Provence levied a special tax for the night watch to have three guards in 1293, and by 1315 this number was increased to four, though this was only for the first three nights after a fair. This may not have been too effective since they walked the streets with torches and were accompanied by a minstrel. Patrician elites often sought to avoid their civic duties and instead shifted the burden of militia duty to the guilds or hired mercenaries to take on their duties. Rosters for duties would be drawn up to ensure that defence and the night watch could be conducted. This roster 
Two could be extended to war, where a quarter or district would be exempt from war while others were sent off to war. The members of the guild would swear an oath of protection to the city and of mutual protection. Since the guilds had a patron saint, they would organize under a banner of their guild. These banners were held as sacred objects and carried into war, while those members of the city who were not assigned to a guild were assigned to a banner. It is reasonable to assert that the bulk of these participants are reservist in nature, owning a minimum of equipment as is their means, adhering to the roster or facing stiff punishments. Though the militias were not just functioning as an at-home defence force, since merchants had to move their goods between cities, they were at risk from theft, extortion, banditry and piracy. Merchants had to respond to these threats to their trade. To respond to these threats, the patricians and burger alike began to develop paramilitary guilds. These paramilitary guilds supplement the urban militias, which was typically infantry in nature. Due to the nature of the increasing dangers of the roads by robber knights, cities were compelled to maintain the peace of the roads and to conduct naval warfare against pirates and enemy cities. This resulted in the formation of forces that were unique to the medieval cities. The shooting societies, the martial societies, the urban navies, and mercenaries. To give a better context, I'm going to take a moment to examine both the shooting societies and the martial societies briefly. I do mean briefly, since each of these really deserve a video of their own. In the 12th and 13th centuries, we observed the rise of shooting confraternities. These confraternities expand, and by the beginning of the 14th century, are formalized into guilds or professional shooters for the defense of the cities, with their own livery and banners. The Guild of Longbowmen, named after St. Sebastian, and crossbowmen after St. George are carrying banners appropriate to each. These shooting societies were later to be joined by the Guild of Handgunners under the banner of St. Barbara or St. Anthony. Ghent is recorded to have accounts of the Guild of St. Sebastian from around 1322, and again around 1346. In Brew, the Guild of St. George was mentioned in 1340 and then 1390, then a Guild of St. Barbara in 1517. There are records of a crossbow shooting guild in Bern in 1375 and in Lausanne in 1378 and in 1406 the Gunners Company is established in Neuchâtel. There is evidence of these shooting societies in the Flemish Lowlands, Swiss Confederation and French towns. These societies and guilds are highly organized and held in regular competitions and feasts. Prizes included swords, daggers, and women's jewellery and clothing. Women participated in the shooting and frequently listed amongst the winners. On the other hand, you have martial societies. These are, again, confraternal in nature. For the merchant and patrician elite, they begin to form around chivalric ideals. These societies form an elite cavalry arm of the town militias. The first of these appear in 1343 in Tallinn, called the Brotherhood of the Blackheads, so called after their patron saint, St. Maurice. The membership was made up of journeymen and unmarried members. Military societies pop up all through the cities. For example, in Gdansk, Toron, Albing, and others. The Merchant's Guild Hall was known as the Artushof, or King Arthur's Court, even featuring a round table continuing the chivalric traditions. Though, again, it is important to note that the members of these societies are not just wealthy landed elites. In 1363, Strasbourg fielded 115 lances, 81 from the patricians, 21 from the guilds, 5 from the boatmen, 4 from the storekeepers, and 4 from the wine merchants. In Wismar in 1483, the militia cavalry was made up exclusively from members of the Butcher's Guild, who were expected to maintain their own war horses, an expensive endeavour indeed. Patrician and other members of these societies were well armed and equipped as knights. Often they are confused as knights in military histories. Many of these burger knights fought at tournament. Although the nobility tried to exclude them from this practice, this was one of those points in which the rising middle class transitioned into the landed noble elites, a topic we will explore later. This though is just brushing the surface of the militias, patrician and 
skilled paramilitary societies. We have not yet covered the role of the armed societies, the navies, or mercenaries in the protection of, and ultimately, the political growth of the cities. What is possible to see is that the medieval cities were capable of welding formidable military might, such that their skills as experienced infantry were sought by the warring princes and kings of the medieval Europe to bolster their own forces. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Means you must have enjoyed the video. So like, comment and subscribe. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.